Jesse Allen. And I'm Charles Zimmerman. And I'm Liz Kiernan. And we are interns at the New York Botanical Gardens Herbarium for the summer of 2011. The New York Botanical Garden was established in 1891 by Nathaniel Lord Britton and his wife, Elizabeth Britton, who were both botanists. They were inspired to create a botanical garden here in New York City after visiting London's world-renowned Kew Gardens. The garden here spans 250 acres and contains over 1 million living plants. These plants exist on the grounds, as well as in the conservatory, the nation's largest Victorian-era greenhouse. Apart from being a living botanical resource, the New York Botanical Garden also includes the world's fourth largest herbarium, which consists of over 7 million plant specimens. Most specimens are dried and pressed and placed on equal-sized sheets. However, oversized fruit are stored in separate boxes, and some specimens are stored in fluid-filled jars. The herbarium also hosts a large collection of fungi, including the world's largest collection of marine fungi, which was donated to the garden by Dr. Jan and Bridget Kohlmeyer in October 2009. This summer, we've had the opportunity to help organize and database the various materials ranging from tiny microscope slides to great big pieces of wood, which comprise this unique and diverse natural history collection. This video is an introduction to Dr. Kohlmeyer and the Kohlmeyer Marine Fungi Herbarium. Well, Jan Kohlmeyer um, didn't start out necessarily interested in fungi. He was assigned to study why marine materials like timber, other shipbuilding materials, why they degraded in seawater. So he began to look at the various types of organisms and factors that cause the um, marine materials to degrade, and he found out that fungi were an important part of that. And so he became fascinated because there was almost nothing known about these marine fungi. So he basically invented this whole um, sub subunit of mycology to study the fungi in marine habitats. In the course of his career, he described about um, over 100, and, let's see, 150 species, five genera, and three new orders of fungi. And he also published a very famous textbook uh, called uh, Marine Mycology, which basically explained how to grow these organisms in artificial culture, how to find them, how to study them, and then also information about the main taxonomic groups that, um, that make up the fungi that grow in marine habitats but he is considered more or less the father of this, this field. He was basically working by himself at the Institute of Marine Sciences at, uh, at the North Carolina uh, Marine Lab. And he knew that when he left, they probably would not maintain the collection there. And uh, he wanted to make sure that his specimens got used by other people. So he would, for years he'd been depositing specimens with us, and he, um, after maybe 10 years of that, he wrote to me and said, you know, I'm about to retire, and I really would, you know, would you be interested in taking my collection? Because the New York Botanical Garden, being one of the largest herbaria in the world, is very heavily used by scientists, and um, there is an expectation that we will keep these forever, that we will make them accessible to all researchers who want to see them. We've done this with many other collections over the years. We had to move not just the specimens, which are light. They, they, they're paper and cardboard and some plastic boxes, but mostly the material is dried. But there were also 17,000 microscope slides that were very valuable, and we didn't want to break a single one. And we also had bottles with fluid in them, which we didn't want to spill any of. And we had a lot of things like files and uh, um, books, all sorts of objects. We loaded several hours on the day we got there, and then the next day, by the you know by mid afternoon, we had it all loaded up, and we drove it up here, and then we had a team of people who were waiting the minute we arrived to unload everything, and we we cleared a space where to put it so that I we could unload it and take back the rental truck, and we didn't break a single microscope slide, so I was very proud of the way that the team worked and the way it turned out.
got the coal buyer database, it was in a, um, an Excel spreadsheet. But our database consists of several different tables. So I have to decide which data from the spreadsheet needs to go in which table in our database. And there's a lot of different uh, types of data in that spreadsheet. There's taxonomy, there's collectors, there's uh, geography. And these are all different tables in our database. So the process for me is transforming a flat spreadsheet into sort of a more multi-dimensional structure that uh, people here at the Botanical Garden can use. Herbaria are usually based on the concept that there's one species per specimen and it's that's all that you have. It's, the typical herbarium specimen is a piece of a dried plant and that's all there is. When you with the Kohlmeyer collection these are microscopic organisms. It's impossible to really pull, tease them apart and have each one as an individual specimen, um, it, except maybe on a microscope slide. But what we really have are collections of substrate. So a piece of twig or a piece of uh, barnacle or, or alga, some, some sort of a substrate is what we normally have in the Kohlmeyer packets. And on there, we might have 10 or 15, maybe even up to 50 different fungi that the Kohlmeyers identified. And sometimes in a piece like that, they may have found two or three different new species. So we have one collection with a whole lot of names, which means that uh, we have to make sure to cross-reference the collections so that people who are looking for that specimen will find it and everything that grew on it. But everybody who's looking for a particular named fungus will find all the instances where that fungus occurs. We have dealt with the problem of having numerous species on each collection in a few different ways. For most situations, we can simply use multiple barcodes, one for each species of fungi found on the substrate. Other cases require different solutions, some of which we will look at more closely in subsequent videos. Here we are with a, uh, a small number of uh, collections from Dr. Cole Meyer's herbarium. These are barnacle encrusted sticks that he picked up. Uh, he's tried to label species uh, with these little flags. Here's a, a, a Lauticia danica. It's on Irish moss. And here's one of my favorite uh, types of collections. It, it's an old piece of driftwood and it's eaten through with uh, shipworms. It's thought by some marine mycologists that uh, the shipworms eat the fungus mm -hmm. and maybe vice versa. Uh, here's an example of Corolla spora. Corolla spora is a genus that has a lot of uh, that, that inhabits sand and you can see that's, that's what we have in this box. It's, it's just like a, a box full of sand. This is another interesting uh, collection. I, I won't take it apart, but it, it was a, it, before it got cut into six pieces, it was a stake, a long stake which was positioned in a, mar in a marsh study area and left to, uh, to, to uh, germinate fungi. Interestingly, they would find some species generally inhabiting lower areas of the, of the stake uh, and some fungi up on the uh, uh, upper areas of the, of the stake where there was less exposure to uh, salt. This is a crushed McDonald's wax paper cup. And in, uh, in his field notes, he noted that he, he scooped up some sea foam and uh, let, let the sea foam dry. And after it dried, he, he scraped through the residue and uh, identified five, uh, five species. Here's a collection on uh, laminaria algae. A lot of that material. Last but not least, this is a, a fungi in, in, uh, inhabiting a, uh, a mango pit. 
So that's it, just uh, tip of the iceberg, or uh, the tip of the wave <laughs> for marine fungi. Well, we, um, we will integrate it into the New York Botanical Garden Herbarium. We will put them all in what we consider the best archival packaging, and we will, we've already, he had a database of his fungi, we've already converted that, we're attaching barcodes to them, and then we'll make the whole thing available online. And from that point on, um, it will really be up to the community to decide what they do with it. What we hope is that anyone who's going to be studying marine fungi will consult the herbarium. They can, they will be able to see, we have all of his notes and illustrations, all of that will be available. Um, so they'll be able to come to our website and see what is in the Kohlmeyer Herbarium and base their research on that. Thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in learning more about the Kohlmeyer Collection or other aspects of the garden, you can watch other videos we have posted or visit our website at www.nybg.org.